Hi there, it's Jen Healy and I am back with day 15, the halfway point, and I want to share with you another video for the Fearless Challenge. And last time I talked about my daily practices and what I do each day to tune myself. And then I shared with you guys a link that has a folder with a compilation of those morning practices. And then I realized it would be really fun for me to just go ahead and offer a live transmission of how I start my day and what I do. And I just wanted to share this so that you don't have to go sifting through a link and finding a folder and then trying them out. And this is going to be a blend of all of my favorite things. Some, some breath work, some gratitude, thriving, sending more love, and then we're gonna just get present. I love doing my holographic body enhancements. That's one of my favorite signature terms that I like to use. And so I won't make this too long, but this will take about another 10, 15 minutes just so you can drop in and let you know how long of a transmission we're gonna do. And I usually spend about a half hour to an hour doing my transmissions when I connect to source and do a source speaks where I'm allowing whatever messages to come in. And I don't channel per se. I feel like we all have this ability to connect to source, to connect to our self, our inner being or our higher self, however you wanna look at it. And so I don't consider this channeling. I consider this connecting because it's me. It's just me with me and you have the same ability and doing these tuning practices, doing this priming work can help you get in touch with that centeredness and to have that energy available. And I guarantee it makes everything in life go way better to have this connection and to lead with this connection. So it's the most important thing that I can do each day is to connect and tune myself up and be more present. And then any sort of activity or inspiration comes from a place of my being, being infused with the doing. So why is this challenging for me? I wound up re-recording this because yesterday when I was doing the meditation to send to you guys there was like lawnmowers going off and then barking dogs and then screaming kids and it was just kind of funny the way the paradox of the universe like as soon as I wanted to drop in uh, it doesn't mean the rest of the world is going to get really still and really quiet so my fingers are crossed that we're going to make it through <laughs> this whole 10 minutes without some big interruptions but if that happens we're just going to flow with it and go with it and so I encourage you, even in your own space, in your own home, if something like that comes up while you're meditating, just let it flow right through. Let all the noise in the background fade um, to find your concentration, because that is one of the most challenging parts for me, is to not only record good video for you guys so you enjoy listening to this, but that I can really just drop in and be present no matter what's happening around me. The world doesn't have to stop just because I'm recording a video. So that's what happened yesterday. So that's one of the challenges. And then part of this Be Brave challenge is not to just talk about things I've done in the past, but to bring, bring it present. And last night we had a gathering at the property here in Mallee Meadows. And I did offer my first live transmission to a group. And I wanted to talk about why that's challenging for me. Well, like I said in some of the beginning videos that I actually am incredibly shy and introverted uh, most of the time. <laughs> and I wear glitter and I go out dancing and I do all these uh, outgoing activities where most people wouldn't consider that to be one of my uh, holdbacks, something that holds me back, but it is. And I also am very cautious and sensitive to the environment or the audience in which I share these things. Because if people are in more of a party mode or it was a talent show, so if people are just doing singing and things like that, do they really wanna drop into meditation time? So I've been offering these, what I call blessings, where we just give gratitude and we come back to our hearts and we connect to everyone around us and just hold that sacred space of appreciation. So that was really fun and it went really well. I enjoyed it. I usually, when I do these kind of transmissions, I have no idea what I'm going to say before I say it, it's not scripted. But this practice that I'm doing with you guys today is something I do every single day. So it is very comfortable for me, but I thought it would be fun to start doing some more live transmissions. 
and at the end I will do one where I actually connect to source and pull through whatever message that source has for me and for all of us because we're all connected in this quantum field and so we can start to feel that we can feel the interconnectivity of everything and how everything works together by doing these practices okay <sighs> so let's go ahead and drop in and first just find the breath I usually like to use the amplified breathing technique you can use whatever breathing technique really works for you but this one I really like because we're gonna like pulse the breath in and out like it's a balloon filling up and squeezing out you can do this with your eyes closed or your eyes open whatever feels good and we're just going to inhale and expand our bubble so this is our body of light or the sphere of energy that's around us and then exhale squeeze pull it in nice and tight and again just pulse with the breath inhale expand and fill yourself up and exhale squeeze it in concentrate it down into the center 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 of your being inhaling fully completely deeply and exhale squeeze 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 see if you can harness all this energy in your chest I call it amplified breathing because it starts to really energize the body. I usually can feel everything start to tingle and come alive. Inhale and exhale. Squeeze it down. So we're just going to do a minute of this. One more big breath. Usually I do five minutes, three or three to five minutes of breathing, but today we're going to do a, an abridged version. So I do encourage you still to go and check out those uh, free files, those playlists that I sent that are my morning practices, because that can really help you deepen into a longer breathwork session. But breathwork is really great for revitalizing the body, also rejuvenating and relaxing the body at the same time. So see how that feels, just a few minutes of conscious, deliberate breathing. And if something changed, if nothing changed, it's okay, but typically we kind of get the cobwebs out. We get some of that congestion out, especially uh, in the lungs but also in the spine, in the back body. So we're pulsing the energy up and down the spine as well as expanding it out. It's expanding in all directions. And then we're gonna go ahead and just drop into our gratitude practice. And again, eyes closed is totally fine. If you feel like keeping your eyes open, that's okay. And I usually start by just giving thanks. And so I do this very simply if you have trouble at any given time, you can just come back to being thankful for the body thankful for your breath, thankful for your being. And I just say this over and over and over again. Thank you, body. Thank you, breath. Thank you, being. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will be really specific. I'm feeling that when I say it. So I'm thanking my organs. I'm thanking my heart for pumping blood and circulating around my body. I'm thanking my muscles and my bones. I'm thanking all of the parts and pieces. And then when I'm thanking my breath, I go ahead and feel this prana and mana that's infused into the air. I feel it filling me. I feel it re-energizing my cells, oxygenating my blood, and I feel the exhale release, like I can let go with every exhale and just breathe it out. <sighs> let go of anything that is ready to get rid of. And then when I thank my being, I'm feeling the spirit, I'm feeling the soul essence, and I'm feeling the energy of my inner being, the life force that animates the form and all of life, all of creation has this life force pulsing through it. And so I'm really taking that in. And then I also just thank the air and the trees for giving us oxygen and the sun and the soils. And I just go through and I thank even my pillow or my bed or my sleep. I just give thanks for everything and anything that I could find. And so there's a longer 10 minute practice of that. Again, feel free to dive in a little deeper. We're gonna do just a few minutes in this sample today. 
And then I imagine myself thriving. I'm going to use my visualization and imagination to see myself thriving. And I love this practice. It was a priming practice that I learned from Tony Robbins. And it just takes three minutes to see yourself thriving. Most of our energy goes towards focusing on the problem instead of imagining an even better future, focusing on the goodness of what's about to come. And to see ourselves thriving, even if it's just five minutes from now in uh, a next segment that we're going into, or five years from now, or 50 years from now, how far can you stretch yourself to really allow your body to thrive, to have optimal aging and optimal health and vitality? Imagine your breath thriving, that your lungs are being rejuvenated and revitalized with even more fresh, clean, vitally alive air, that the trees are happy, that the planet is thriving, that the waters are clean and you can see everything around you thriving. Imagine that no matter what is happening in the news or what people are referencing we can actually start to build the future we want to see by seeing ourselves thriving in it and pulling that towards us to take steps to move towards that and then we want to see our being thriving more of our soul is able to embody and just enjoy that experience of your soul thriving your spirit thriving in your being in your body in your life in all the levels and layers and it just feels really good to use the power of our visualization and imagination for the upliftment and the betterment of our lives instead of using our imagination or visualization worrying or thinking about the past and being concerned or fearful because that's negatively manifesting using the imagination. So we're positively manifesting with our imagination by seeing ourselves thriving. And this can be really challenging, so I want you to really make it as easy and simple as possible and then build up to some of the bigger things, right? Sometimes it's hard to see ourselves thriving in the outer world if our situation, our current situation isn't matching. But let yourself dream it alive. It is such a fun practice. It's so enjoyable. And then we're just gonna take a minute to love more. And this can look like I can love my body more, I can love my breath more, I can love my being even more. I can love the meditations more, I can love this challenge more. I can love all the opportunities that are coming even more. So it's not that I'm not loving, <laughs> it's that there's always more room for love. And you can send the love back. If you couldn't love someone or a situation in the past, you can send love back. It's never too late to love more. And you can also send love to your future self. You can send more love to what you are going to experience and the things that you do want. You can already love it before it even gets here. And I do this quite often with loving my challenges even more, not necessarily uh, embracing the negative circumstances or behavior as loving it, even if it's unenjoyable to me, but I'm loving the growth and the experience and the person underneath the behavior because we tend to cut ourselves off. And if we cut ourselves off from love, we cut ourselves off from everything. So we can't stop loving one person and still have love thro flow through us. It's, it's open source. So I make it a point that if I want to keep my channel open to love, even if a situation isn't something that I agree with or I like, that where can I still be grateful and thrive and send love? It is a very powerful practice. And so I'm going to quickly just go through the holographic body enhancements and give you a taste of the three essential keys and keep this video <laughs> just to a few more minutes because it can get like easily a half hour, an hour for me getting into these meditation and uh, visualization and transmissions. It's just so enjoyable. I can start to feel the cells start to vibrate and dance and I just love dropping into this space. So stick with me for a few more minutes. I want you to imagine there is a pillar that surrounds the entire spine like a hollow tube and I call this the pillar of light and if you don't do anything else each day I want you to imagine your pillar strong and steady like a tree trunk holding you surrounding your entire 
torso. So it can be small and just around the actual spine or it can be as wide and even bigger than the diameter of your head and torso. It can be a gigantic pillar. Whatever feels good for you that day. So take some time to imagine this pillar of light surrounding your entire spine and it goes past your feet and it's a grounding rod into the earth and it goes all the way down to the center, center, center of the earth and plugs you in. There's a space at the center of the earth reserved for you and this can pull up your core signature. This is connecting you to your reason for being here, your reason for embodying your mission. So I love that practice of plugging into the very center of the earth and not just the crust of the earth where like the waves on the surface of the ocean where it can get really turbulent and choppy. And then you're also going to imagine in your pillar that your antenna rises like a silver cord all the way to the heavens. And this is going to plug into the sun. So now you're plugged into the center of the earth and the center of the sun. And the sun is a star portal that has the ability to connect you directly to the seat of your soul. And sometimes that's hard to imagine. So just play with that with me and just imagine that there's a space in the very center of the sun and that takes you directly to the seat of your soul. And whatever way that looks for you in terms of your visualization and imagination, enjoy that experience. So now you're centered and connected and this pillar is a vertical axis, a vertical channel that lifts the posture, lifts the spine and can help you feel really strong and steady with all the winds and fluctuations. It's incredibly helpful to find your pillar and it actually creates a buoyancy so that you don't have to hold yourself up. You're being held in your pillar. It feels amazing. Like there's a string that's pulling up through the crown of the head and lifts you up. And then we're going to go ahead and work with the body of light. So with the body of light, it's going to be bigger than your arms extended. So that's about six feet around your body. Just imagine this huge golden bubble surrounding you. And this golden bubble can be sealed with like an electric fence and electric blue trim to have a nice clean boundary. And it has a big HEPA, HEPA filter system, I call it, where it has this vibrant purple film and it's gonna filter out any debris, any low energies or low frequencies that wouldn't serve you. You don't have to take everything in. We tend to be like sponges and really permeable to the energies around us. And we can selectively sift and filter, just like we have filters in our car and in our home to filter the air, to keep it clean. We want to have an energetic filter around us. And so this golden bubble not only surrounds you, but everyone else is in their own golden bubble. And this is incredibly helpful, especially if you're feeling like psychic energy coming at you or you're in situations that don't feel clean energetically. It's like golden bubbles. Everybody's in their golden bubble. And it's a really easy, takes three seconds and you can feel the difference. Like you get to own your space. Even if you really, really love someone, they don't get in your bubble with you. They have their own bubble. And when we're each in our own bubble, our relations can be like much cleaner, much cleaner and clearer. Like what's mine, what's theirs. And then you can fuel and fill yourself up. So your golden bubble can fill up. If you imagine this golden nectar showering down from the sun, from the heavens, it can fill up like a bathtub. And then the pillar is like a tube where you can flush and you can flush any old energies out and just let it go. Every day we want to flush the system, flush the body, just like you take a shower for your physical body. These are these energetic showers that I call nectar. It just feels like this delicious honey that coats the entire energy field and cleans it, refreshes it. <sighs> that just feels really good. So the last one of the three essential keys is the family of light or your soul family, quantum family. I call it the family of light where we plug in our root system and let the roots spread to connect to the interweb. So we're connected to all the life forms, all the creatures, all of the creation is connected through this grid. I call it a consciousness grid. And then it's the same like a tree, like your branches are going to rise only as 
far as your roots allow you. So the deeper down you go in your, your roots, the more stable your pillar is to rise. And so your branches can extend and they have like little satellite dishes on them where you can connect to anybody you want. It can be your ancestors, it can be a superstar angel, it can be any sort of ascended masters. I have a whole team. I have a whole light team, of course, that I call the family of light. And this is my high council. And I communicate on the higher planes with uh, different beings that help guide me. And it could be as simple as I'm very connected to Einstein on, uh, for example, since I love physics so much, I've always been connected to these, we'll just say, wisdom keepers and frequency holders that can share with us the information and intelligence that they have access to. And they're not busy, right? They're no longer in form. So we can connect to their spirit. We can connect to anybody's spirit. And it could be someone in the past, someone in the future, but we can actually connect to, and again, play in your visualization and imagination. Maybe it's just an auntie that you really felt connected to. It doesn't have to be, you know, a famous person or it doesn't have to be an archangel but it's whoever resonates for you. And for me, I first and foremost connect to my higher self. So my master level soul self is what I call it because we're all masters here on the earth plane. Might not feel like it sometimes when our memories need to come back and when our memories have been erased as soon as we come into the earth plane. It's challenging at times to remember that we're all masters here and this is the earth school is a a learning playground so we are here to learn and we're here to grow and uh, when we feel like we're connected to all of that wisdom all of that information it's kind of like the energetic and spiritual google right now we have google before that was beyond our imagination and over the last 20 years technology has really pointed to and showed us the fact that there's no lack of information it's all here it's all available to us we just need to tap into it and get really in tune with the subtle energy body so this information for me comes through the feeling body so the more that i can drop into my breath and drop into my presence then i can start to sense it and typically Source doesn't communicate to me through words. It's not whispering something in my ear. It's more like an impulse or I actually get blocks of thought. That's why I call it holographic. It looks like a hologram where I'll get uh, a whole movie play out in front of me. And that movie is giving me the information that I'm deciphering and bringing into words. So whatever it looks like for you is perfect. Thank you for taking a little extra time today to drop in. I look forward to sharing more and feel free to ask me anything. Leave in the comments, if you wish, your experience of just doing these simple practices with me today and what else you would like to see. I'm really happy that I'm diving in and sharing more of these parts and pieces of my world with you. I do these transmissions and meditations every day privately with my clients, but it is a real stretch for me to start offering them publicly. And these are just the real simple practices. If there's something going on in your world that is more intense and that needs more specificity, I'm happy to drop into a personalized transmission to get that communication from source. I'll be doing a video soon on QHHT, the quantum healing hypnosis therapy that I've been studying since 2018, which is super high level powerful work i'll be talking about that a little bit more but we have access to the wisdom and the information that we need to live our best lives it is still a mystery we're here to play in the game uh, to be part of the mystery but we do have access more access than we're allowing ourselves so that's why why i'm sharing this work and the source speaks and the connection to higher self it's really it could you can look at it as out there but it's really in here so one of the easiest ways to connect is to just get in tune with your heart so go ahead and feel if it feels good to end with your hands on your heart and then bring this big wave of love and gratitude over your entire body and just end with saying thank you thank you thank you once again sometimes that's as simple as it is especially if things are getting a little rough in life just saying thank you smiling and saying thank you can start to shift the energy start to shift the vibration 
All right, I look forward to coming back tomorrow. Thanks again for watching. Aloha.